Time now for politics. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Obama has finally opened up for the very first time on what may be his intentions uh, on running for president of the republic. Rumors are running that the vice president, uh, who is of course the head of the economic management team, is head to head uh, with the trade minister, Alan Kujicharamati. Uh, just last month, the general secretary of the new patriotic party uh, issued a stern warning to persons touting uh, individuals who are running for whole office. However, uh, with the next general elections fast approaching, a lot of pressure is mounting on the national leadership um, of uh, the party to choose the next standard bearer um, for the party. So what will the vice president do? Will he run uh, for the race? We'll be hearing from the vice president shortly, but I want to uh, introduce at this point uh, Kujopoku is uh, also uh, one of the aspiring persons running uh, for the flag bearership slot of the new patriotic party in the 2024 elections. Welcome, sir, to the polls. Hi, good afternoon and good afternoon to your viewers. Okay, I want you to listen to this carefully because uh, there's an instructive statement the Vice President is, is making here, saying that uh, for now we need to focus, uh, and I mean the NPP, quoting him, uh, would have to focus on supporting the President to first of all succeed. He was speaking when uh, he led a delegation um, to the inaugural ceremony of the Vice President, now President of the Republic of Kenya. Let's listen. It's actually leading in many of these areas, mm -hmm. globally. It's, it's really interesting, yeah. particularly you putting that digitization is not just for the sake of it, but having it find solutions. That's right. And um, looking at the enthusiasm you have about everything you're talking <laughs> about, and I just went through your portfolio, everything you've done, and from the time you're studying at Oxford, and I'm like, mm -hmm. do you ever get time to rest? Because <laughs> I know as vice president, you're currently sitting in different boards. Yeah. I, I also believe you're consulting for the Central Bank <laughs> of Ghana. Well, when do you rest? Well, basically, I, I think that uh, actually my wife also asks me that question. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever rest? Yeah. You know, because, uh, I enjoy what I do, uh, mm. and I do, of course, find time to rest. But the, the problems are so many, and I'm, I'm trying as much as possible to help my boss deal with a lot of these problems because uh, you inherit them and you, you, you have to find solutions. And for me, that is why I'm in politics, mm. right? Just to make sure you can help people solve problems. Yes. Uh, and that is, that is so, I, I, I always say that maybe I'll rest later when we, mm. when we, are, we are done with more. But uh, I, I, I'm okay. I'm yeah. okay. Thank you very much. Ghana will be having um, general elections in 2024. Yes. And I'm pretty sure many Ghanaians are fronting your name to be the success of the current president. <laughs> um, is, am I right? Are you, are you working towards that as well? Well, I think right now I'm just focused on helping my boss, the president, Nanako Fuado, mm -hmm. fulfill his vision yes. and, and deliver on his agenda. Uh, we, we don't really have too much time for thinking about 2024 right now. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, if you get to 2024 and you don't have a record, mm -hmm. you will have nothing to, yes. to campaign on. So right now, we are focused on that and we don't know what the future holds, mm -hmm. but we'll focus on the work yeah. for now. Uh, so could you put your, your thoughts on that? The fact that you may not have a message in 2024, uh, if we have persons touting um, candidates going into the primaries of the party? Um, the conversation is in two folds. Um, the person speaking is a vice president of the nation, and he's saying that he needs to help his boss, who's the president, to succeed. And based on that, he would be able to stand on that to campaign. Um, for someone like me, I hold a different view. Yes, if the party vis-a-vis -vis, um, the government, because the party puts in the government. Um, what Nanado has done, Nanado is going out. Nanado is not going to be on the ballot. So for someone like me, yes, I would want to tell Ghanaians what I want to do. For the person who is speaking, who is Dr. Baumia, he would have to tell Ghanaians what he has done. And what he has done would be what Nanado has done. Because yeah, I'm not sure if you're board. going to campaign. Um, that is if uh, the delegates, for instance, give you... Uh, a chance, you would go ahead and solely tout your personal achievements. It has to be no, on, the, on the track record of, 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 of the NPP. Okay, track right. record achievements are things in the past. 
His Excellency Nanadu Akufuado will have achieved so much, and he's going out. He's not on the ticket. What the point I'm making is that there are two different conversations. You need to tell Ghanaians what you are going to do for Ghanaians going forward. What you are touting, as you claim, as in somebody's achievement, that is in the past. We are forward-looking people. You know, His Excellency, look, his, the Vice President need to be able to tell Ghanaians that I have done this and done this and done this with the President, so if you give me a chance, I will continue. That is what he's saying. He's saying that he needs to be able to help him force the President to finish their agenda. For someone like me, I'm not part of government. Okay, what I want to tell Ghanaians is tell Ghanaians what I can do for the nation. We have multifaceted problems. We have various areas that people are complaining. It's not everything the government is do that I agree with. There are some things the government does that I don't agree with. So I have to tell Ghanaians what I could do differently. But he is in a different um, kettle of fish. He means to tell Ghanaians what he did with his boss, why they should let him continue. So there are two different conversations here. Is it the case that you're not impressed about the stewardship of the vice president? Uh, he may be running alongside yourself. Uh, indeed, uh, you all go through the vetting smoothly. I am 100% impressed with the stewardship of the vice president. The vice president is doing a very magnificent job. But, I mean, my message and his message are two different messages. He is in government, I'm not. So he needs to tell Ghanaians, I run my own personal business. I can tell Ghanaians about my personal business that I'm successfully running. But that's not what Ghanaians want to hear. Ghanaians want to hear what tomorrow holds for them. It's the future that we care about, not the past. It's like somebody telling me that, oh, the MPP ran on the uh, goodwill and then the aspirations and the good things that President Kufo did. President Kufo did what he could. He's gone. Nanado has done what he can. He's not on the ticket for 2024. So, look, there are two parts of it. People want to make it a party thing that, oh, what message is the party going to run on? The party needs to tell Ghanaians what they will do for them going forward. What has happened is under the bridge, that's spilled milk. What are we going to do for Ghanaians going forward? What message do we have for Ghanaians for 2025, 2026? What Ghana do we want to build for Ghanaians for the next 30 years? For me, that's my message. His Excellency, the Vice President, is in government, so he needs to tell the people what he did while in government and why they should give him a chance to come back again. Mm. That is the difference between uh, me and the Vice President. And Kujopoki, your, your party is beginning to get worried about um, the jostlings for uh, the various vacant slots that may be available going forward. And I just want to bring you excerpts of that statement in terms of the uh, way forward. This was the last time uh, we're actually hearing from the General Secretary of your party, uh, Justin Kondria Frippong, after some people staged the health walk in Kumasi, and of course, we had some others uh, making pronouncements on radio. So, I want us to have uh, excerpts of that in terms of the way forward. Uh, clearly, uh, this is a statement indicating that we wish to further reiterate that the leadership of the party is determined and committed to ensuring that activities of all party officers, executives, individuals, groups, supporters, and loyalists. Uh, of presidential and parliamentary hopefuls do not breach the party's code of conduct for presidential and parliamentary primaries. Uh, the party wishes to further state that the institution and enforcement of these measures are not intended to aid any electoral advantage of any prospective candidate, but to prevent tension that often arise in the lead up to the presidential and parliamentary uh, primaries and uh, to secure a united uh, party going forward into the 2024 elections. Uh, excepts of the statement there. You agree that the vice president uh, was simply saving and ensuring party unity, right? Well, we need party unity because a united front is what will win us in 2024. Um, nobody is of the view that breaking the eight, which is the mantra that you heard over and over, is going to be easy. It's the first time that a party wants to continue for 12 years straight. Um, there is a lot of factors where breaking the eight is a problem. We need party unity, and that is why the new executives at the party wants to make sure that everybody basically follow one script. Um, campaigning early, presidential election, when it comes early, brings problems. It destabilizes the government, basically um, throw out the various activities that needs to happen. Bear in mind, there is the need to have the parliamentary election for orphan constituencies, and also for sitting constituencies. If the parliamentary election takes the lead in these things, it will create a problem for the parliamentarians also, because then the grassroots will be, um, will be 
split into various camps and some MPs might not be able to get their message to be heard. Meanwhile, it might not be the necessary conversation that needs to be had at that point. So it's important that everybody listen to what the party um, executives are saying and not basically peek ahead of time. The president, uh, the vice president, I should say, uh, indicating that, that there are so many challenges confronting this government. Uh, you agree that it, it may actually affect your fortunes going into the future? Um, those challenges facing the government will be solved, hopefully, before 2024. Um, the government still have two years to run. I mean, the government is not ending tomorrow. They all agree there are challenges in the country, but with the leadership of the president, we are hoping that there will be um, solutions to some of these problems before 2024. How about the meeting that we heard of? Of course, uh, as part of the earlier uh, instructions I brought uh, through uh, earlier on the, on the uh, way forward, uh, which was issued by the General Secretary of your party, Dustin Kodia for Impon. There was supposed to be a meeting um, being spearheaded by the uh, National Steering Committee of your party to engage all of you who are, of course, intending to run as presidential candidate for the NPP. Has that meeting happened? And what were some of the resolutions? And would you say that you're on course as a political party? Well, the meeting has not happened. Um, for the last time I heard, there was going to be a meeting of all aspirants. That meeting has not taken place. Hopefully, it would if it doesn't. For me, look, um, if the general secretary of the party comes out and say that everybody should abide by the code of conduct, everybody should abide by the code of conduct. Peaking early and making noise, if you think you are popular, okay, just wait till when you file your document and you go to vetting, you are popular regardless. Trying to go ahead of time to try and campaign now or do posters, do banners, and do billboards across the country doesn't make you any popular or popular as it is. I am the only person in this race who has never been a minister, has never been an MP, has never held any party position. So if anybody is supposed to be making noise and trying to get ahead of themselves, it should be me. But I'm calm. I'm not doing any of those. So those that have been in politics for over 20 years and are still trying to jump the gun in trying to um, not abide by this code of conduct is a bit amazing because everybody knows their name. Most of these people are household names. I'm the only one that I'm having to now make sure that people across the country even know that there's somebody called Kuchipoku who wants to run for this flag bearership. But most of the competitors or the prospective aspirants are people that have been in politics for over 20 years. So I'm surprised they are all in a hurry to basically jump the gun, so to say. Mm, but, but surprisingly, we've not uh, officially heard uh, a categorical statement from the vice president indicating that he'll contest and that of the trade minister. Uh, the fear is that giving the directives from the president that anyone who declares their aspirations may have to resign from this government. Uh, probably that's what's delaying the process. Uh, what's your take on, on that presidential statement regarding persons who are within government and would want to run for president? The vice president is the only one who does not have to resign. From the tradition that has been, everybody who is a minister resigns to um, contest. The vice president is the only one that does not have to resign to contest. We saw that with Aliu Mahama. Um, all other ministerial position experiments have to resign. Ali Mahama stayed on as vice president and basically contested. I think it's the um, norm. If you look at Nigeria, all the other people who were trying to contest had to resign. The vice president was the only one who stayed on and contested. So I think the norm is that everybody else has to resign, but the vice president is the only one who will stay on and campaign as a vice president. Mm, and this is where many or some political analysts are saying, allow the vice president to go uncontested. Uh, the fact that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia appears to be at the face of the new patriotic party now, he's done uh, many more campaigns than any of you going into the elections. Uh, he's been out there and he says, we don't know what the future holds for him in terms of as to whether or not he would contest. But the, fe the feeling uh, from some experts is, allow Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to contest unopposed uh, so you can have him as your flag bearer going into the 2024 elections. Uh, Kojo Poku, are you not of the view that if we allow Dr. Mahmoud Obamia to lead the NPP, um, your party may have better chances in the 2024 elections? Well, nobody has any better chances than anybody else. The party constitution says that there will be a primaries held at least 24, sorry, at least 12 months before the election, the general election. Um, if anybody thinks that 
by the fact of being a vice president, you are popular. Let's go and look at the results, what happened in 2007 in Legon, and see what number Alaji Aliu Muhammad got at that time. May he so rest in peace. Look, like I said to you, for me, the message is very simple. The grassroots of the party are the cardinals and the princes of this party. They are the ones that are supposed to elect the new leader. We changed our constitution in, 2020, uh, in 2012 to say that the grassroots, the uh, polling station executives, the coordinators, are the majority of the people that vote. They are about 183,000. They are the ones whose voice is to be heard. There is nothing called unopposed. There is nothing called popular acclamation. If you think you are popular, go to the grassroots, tell them what you want to do for this party, and they would massively vote for you. Yeah, That's but, but let's, let's bring experience on, uh, or perhaps um, convenient advantage, if I may call it that way. Uh, the vice president now uh, has stood the test of time, has stood with the, uh, your presidential candidates on three separate, or, or at least two se known separate occasions, um, contested the elections, lost, was in the witness box for you, in fact, was witness box for you, uh, in, in the uh, two, two, 208 um, presidential, uh, 2012 presidential uh, petition. Uh, then we're, we're seeing him continue to serve as the vice president. So he's been around for quite some time, you agree? So he would not have any problem with the grassroots of the party. The world, all the things that you are telling me, the grassroots of the party is aware of. The 183,000 grassroots of the party are aware of all the things you've told me. If they think that those criteria is enough for him to be president, flag bearer, they would vote for him to be flag bearer and the president of this nation. Basically, nobody can acclaim, nobody can say, let somebody go uncontested. The prince and cardinals of this party are the grassroots. They are the ones that we respect. They are the ones that everybody has to go to to tell them why they want to continue in any position or be in a position. If they agree with your assessment, then there shouldn't be a problem. So here's the case. Uh, there are people who have put across some um, uh, solutions to this matter. Uh, we've heard, uh, is it the likes of uh, Titus Glover? I'm not sure if uh, th that's the exact person making such a proposition. But other key figures within your new patriotic party say, let's have, for instance, the trade minister run with the vice president, the vice president then as your presidential candidate, and then Alan Termating as the vice presidential candidate. Some say it should be uh, the other way around. Where do you situate yourself in all of this? And what do you have to say about some of these propositions that are coming through? Well, it's an um, interesting conversation to be had. Look, the party needs to win 2024. If the powers that be or some people within the party think that they can convince somebody not to contest and that person will be a flag bearer, that is a, a negotiation, a horse trading between two people. It will not stop the contest happening. The primaries of the party would be had. The constitution says that there's going to be a primary. Whether two people within the number of nine or number of ten wants to come and say that, okay, we are going to go into horse trading, you contest, if you win, it makes me a flag bearer. That's a conversation between two people. It does not bind anybody in the party to that. The party needs to go to the, the polls. We need to conduct election for the flag bearer. The amazing thing is that if that camp, which is the two camp you mentioned, the trade minister and the vice president, think that they have enough support, to be able to do that horse trading, one puts his weight behind the other, and they campaign as a team. And if the first president, which is the vice president, win, he makes the trade minister vice president. If they think that can work, why not? That is for them to do, not for me to say anything about. I, Kujupuku, am in this race to try and win it. Um, I'm not um, discussing uh, flag bearer with anybody. Nobody discussing flag bearer with me. The most important thing is that I am talking to the grassroots of the party. They think I deserve to be the flag bearer of the party. I'll be flag bearer of the party. Nobody can push them to be flag bearer of the party. Who, who would be your potential vice presidential candidate if you're giving the opportunity? Uh, if I have your personal number, I'll probably be talking to you to discuss <laughs> that with you. Interesting points there, but we'll have to leave it here. I'm sure the conversation will continue some other time. Kojo Poku, a presidential mm -hmm. aspirant um, on the uh, ticket of the NPP. We'll see uh, what then will happen in the coming days. Uh, let's. Uh